Hi, welcome to the channel. Today I wanted to share with you my experiences when it came to installing a set of test pipes in my Lamborghini Gallardo Superleggera. Um, if you're not familiar with this car, it's the highest mileage Gallardo Superleggera in the world. And um, there's a very common problem on these five liter V10s that I just had to address very quickly. And um, I'm gonna go into this into, in a separate video, but long story short, um, the catalytic converters have a tendency to break down over time and um, particulate gets sucked back into the motor, um, causing cylinder wall scoring and all sorts of bad damage. So I've heard some horror stories from other individuals with uh, mileage less than mine, and I really just wanted to get these catalytic converters off the car, take a look at them, and put in something that um, is gonna solve the problem. So today we're gonna put in a set of uh, Lorini um, test pipes in this Superleggera. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what it sounds like when I start it right up. And then in a future video, I'm gonna show you exactly how much different it is um, on a frequency analysis kind of perspective and how much louder it is, um, kind of quantitatively more than uh, qualitatively. So look forward to that in the future. But this video is really to do a brief overview of my experiences when it came to installing these test pipes. There's a gentleman in Tennessee, uh, his YouTube channel name is uh, Lap of the World and he did an excellent video on installing a set of Lorini sport catalytic converters in his pre-facelift uh, base Gyarado. I view this video in addition to what he did on his channel. He did an excellent DIY and I really was just blown away by, by the quality of work that he did on his video. And um, there's a couple things that I did a little bit differently and uh, I wanted to highlight those in this video. So if you follow along, let's uh, start taking apart this car and put these awesome test pipes on and then stick around to the end and we can uh, really hear what it sounds like. So the first thing I did was take off the airbox, and I noticed this is actually a revised design comparative to older Gyarados where uh, you have these two little connectors on the outside and that connects to the uh, secondary air injection system um, actually located inside the airbox. So Really convenient packaging, really nice, um, and I, I think it's a really good design, and um, I'm happy that they revised it to make it a little bit easier as, as the years went on. So now that we have that airbox out, we can get a good look at what a high mileage Lamborghini actually looks like. And overall, it's pretty impressive. I mean, um, just a little bit of dirt um, in here. Probably clean that up. But overall, it looks pretty good. And I'm gonna work on getting this frame rail out. And then I'm gonna work on unbolting the exhaust temperature sensors. And then underneath here, you have the misfire tubes. So on both sides, and then these clamps. Apparently these clamps are very expensive. So yeah, I'll show you how I'm gonna get those off. And one thing I noticed right off the bat is that there's a random little wire for the, uh, the E-gear um, clutch position sensor and surprisingly everything works fine. So maybe this is just a, a shielding wire or something like that But I, I'm pretty sure I can fix that but <laughs> That's the only thing I really noticed down here. Um, everything else looks great uh, These as far as I'm aware, I'm about 90% positive. These are the original e-gear lines as well, and I know those are prone to failure, but They look great so I sprayed these down a little bit earlier with some PB Blaster and I'm gonna do it again. Um, I really I really wanna get these off properly and the best thing to do is get some PB Blaster on it and really really let those clamps like contemplate their life, life choices. And then we're gonna come back with the blowtorch and, uh, and just really get those off. And then this was able to come out, exhaust gas temperature sensor was actually very easy to get out. Um, I got it out with a uh, 10 mil box end wrench and it came out no sweat. I didn't need a torch or anything like that. And then same with the misfire tube in the front. You can see that back there. Um, that came out with the 10 mil uh, box end wrench in the front in up in here as well and no issues. So I actually bought this to take uh, bolts off, but um, what happens is my wife actually uses it to, uh, <laughs> to light candles, so. She always gets kind of kind of mad at me, like in a joking way, whenever I use it actually in the garage. So, kind of funny. But I'm just gonna torch the hell out of these, and I've noticed that it's best when you when you do this because it it just helps them come off. And you can see a lot of that PB blaster burning off as well. 
And you want to stay away from this O2 sensor. Um, there's uh, fragile ceramics in there that you definitely don't want to don't want to mess up. I'll do it this side too. Actually, I'm going to do this side first. Let's do that. Jeez, it stinks. I think I got it. That's good. Okay, let's do the other one. Please, please, please. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. <laughs> that sucks. I kind of have an expectation that that was going to happen. So I got that clamp off. I just had to hammer the living hell out of it. And this is a common problem. So let's take it on the bench and have a look at it. I'm gonna to try to get the other side first though. We'll see if that side comes out a little bit easier. Um, yeah. Oh, it stinks. Let's try it out. Ah. Hmm, can't tell yet. You know you can tell if like a bolt is yielding or not? <laughs> Just like kind of intuitively. I don't, I don't know, I can't tell yet. I think it's coming off. I think so. Okay, I got it off. Sweet. It's probably hot as hell. Oh, not too bad. Let's go to the other side. There we go. Nice. So if you're having a problem getting these uh, EGTs out, I would say spray like a little bit of PB Blaster into that little interface. And it's a closed element sensor. So that means that it's just encased in like a, like a stainless steel. And um, that should like loosen it up between the uh, exhaust pipe bung and the, uh, the actual temp sensor. I think it just gets a little bit rusted over time. And the sensor's like super long. Good, I got that one. So, yeah, I do not want to damage these. They're very expensive. <laughs> and they're, they're proprietary to Lamborghini. So I just, I just want to avoid that. So that's a little tip of mine. So next we're going to jack up the car and pull both of the uh, rear wheels off. And then we're going to start to work on the uh, front and rear inner fender liners for the rear of the, the car. And this is going to allow us to get at some of the fasteners that we need to get at for the um, subframe assembly that we need to remove to uh, properly get these catalytic converters out. And these uh, fender liners only come out one way, so just take your time and be careful. Um, a bunch of dirt fell down on mine. Nothing was damaged back here except for just a little bit of dirt. That's all it really was. So probably when I put everything back together, I'll take it out onto the street and then um, wash it down before I put the fender liners back in. Once we have those fender liners out, we can take out the two fasteners located right here and located right here for that subframe assembly. I also pulled this uh, inlet hose down and I'm really surprised about this inlet hose. I would think that there would be some power left on the table by revising this and maybe reducing some of the turbulent flow that goes through this pipe. I don't know, maybe a composite piece in the future? What do you think? And one thing I wanted to point out in here is how insane the super leger exhaust is. So coming from here, you have, uh, this is coming from the catalytic converter, and then you have the, uh, the flap for the exhaust, and when that's closed, it goes into the muffler. And then when it's open, it's literally just a straight pipe out the back. So <laughs> pretty cool straight pipes right from the factory. Um, I know a lot of people replace these um, with uh, a system like an X-pipe, so you can, you can uh, get a different harmonic out of the, uh, the engine, but I think it just sounds insane just as it is. And this is why, like it's, it's just an absolutely mental exhaust right from the factory. Uh, someone else was noting on one of my er earlier videos that 
Um, it sounded like I had tap it noise and it's actually not that it's actually this exhaust valve. So maybe eventually I might put a little bit of preload into this, this valve. Um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't decided what I want to do yet. With that wheel off, you can get right at that clamp holding the other side of the, uh, the catalytic converter on. And fortunately I was able to get those off. So a little bit tricky, but thankfully I got them off. The same goes for this side, where when you get the wheel off, you can get right at that clamp, and thankfully I was able to get it off without anything breaking, so that's nice. So I went ahead and removed the, uh, the subframe assembly. It's this aluminum bar assembly that you can see inside the engine bay. Um, this is me removing it in the front, and then we're going to move to the other side and remove it on that side as well. And there's little shims that are attached to this as well, so be sure to grab those and don't, don't lose track of those. So this side is just a little bit more complicated. You have to move the coolant reservoir out of the way to get access underneath. And then there's going to be this plate that actually mounts the coolant reservoir to the, uh, the frame. And um, you're going to want to have to remove that as well. But overall pretty easy. And then we can finally get that front frame assembly completely out and then start working on the rear. And now that we remove those bolts as well in the uh, fender liners, we can finally undo all the bolts for the uh, rear subframe assembly and get that whole piece completely out of the car and out of the way. And now that we have that subframe out of the way, we can finally get at the catalytic converters. And I'd recommend just leaving the uh, pre-cat O2 sensors on and um, taking them off on the bench once you get both of them off the car. And like you saw, I started with the right and now I'm moving to the left. And right off the bat, you can see that there's some particulate in the outlet of the header. And I don't know if this is uh, catalytic converter particulate or it might be from the clamps because the clamps have a little bit of degradation to them, but I'll show you that. And with the classic drop test that I think everyone loves to do is to uh, show you how much material really comes out of this uh, catalytic converter and um, subsequently gets sucked into the motor. And inside the catalytic converter, you can see delamination on that surface. And this is true for both of those. So we have the clamps on the table. And overall, I think they're pretty nice. Um, you saw that one that broke on me. So what I actually did is I already started modifying these. Um, I decided to try and replace these studs with stainless steel hardware. This one's a serrated um, head bolt. And then I have a uh, locking nut, like an all metal locking nut with a, a deformed um, thread profile. And so I, I started drilling these out and I quickly realized that it, I think this is a hardened steel clamp and um, it really wasn't a drilling operation. It was more of a, uh, a friction stir welding operation and uh, lots of smoke in the garage, not really that fun. And honestly, I can't really recommend it. Um, I'm honestly gonna recommend to you just buy new clamps. Um, I was hoping I could salvage these, but I don't think I can. Um, I was able to get two uh, with the, uh, to remove the studs but these two, I'm not even gonna bother. Like I went through drill bits like it was going out of style and um, I just can't recommend it. So I'm gonna be searching for new clamps. Um, and then in, in the inner room, I'm just gonna put uh, nuts on these and then chase the, uh, chase the threads and clean them up a little bit. And so the clamps were in good shape overall, but I noticed that the exhaust gaskets were in terrible shape. And these have a tendency to break down over time. You can see that. Um, I think that the particulate that we saw in the exhaust stream was this clamp, a large majority of it. And then finally, when we released the clamp pressure, um, they just broke apart and then it just sat in the exhaust stream. So I don't know if this was in the motor or not, but I'm glad I'm replacing it either way, because this is just completely corroded. And I actually found these at uh, Napa. These are the same dimensions and everything like that. And you can see that instead of having a all metal profile, it's more of a wire mesh profile. And what I wanted to do was just try these out. Um, these are about 10 bucks a pop and I'll be sure to link the part number in the description. Um, I was just thinking maybe we could try these out and see if they work. Um, if I have any issues with them, I'll let you know. I figured we'd try to remove a little bit of the dependency from, from strictly OEM parts and see if we can go with something that's maybe a little bit more readily available and uh, a little bit easier to find. But I'll let you know if these work, and if I have any issues, I'll be sure to provide you with an update. So when I did this, I was actually still waiting for the test pipes. And um, so I decided to put the subframe assembly back in since I had so much space. 
Uh, I'm going to do this by installing a bolt on both sides in the back. And then I have these little subframe shims. And these just go behind here, slide right in. And then the same for the other side. The fronts are a little bit tricky, so I recommend getting the bottom one first. Getting it properly seated, sort of. And then holding on to it while you position the top beam in place. Just like that. Money. Okay. And we can throw that fastener in. Or the one thing I've noticed with these subframe assemblies is to get all the fasteners in and then make sure that these are in these front rails are a little bit loose. And then go ahead and tighten the uh, the ones on this main crossbar. So one right here, one right there, up there and up there, and then the ones underneath as well. And then um, you can go ahead and tighten these these frame rails. And I was I want them to be like a little bit loose because um, you still have to get to the uh, spark plugs and the coil packs. And if these are like kind of tightly coupled against the frame, you might have a lot more difficulties getting this beam out if you need to in the future. So what I'm going to be replacing the catalytic converters with is a set of uh, Lorini Sport Cats. And these are awesome because they're uh, 316 stainless steel and then they come with a, a heat shield on the outside. And I was able to get this from a, a vendor named uh, Jason Bertman on the, uh, on the uh, Lamborghini Talk forums. And he was very helpful and able to actually get these to me um, on time and in stock. So very happy about that. And um, wonderful guy. I recommend you work with him. He has a, an 08 Gardo as well. So another car enthusiast, always good to work with those. So I'm pretty excited to get these on the car. Um, I view these as like a, a stop gap. I really want to get a set of Lorini uh, sport catalytic converters on this, but I just didn't want to wait. And I just want to get something on the car and get those old catalytic converters out. And then probably when I rebuild the motor, I'm going to put a set of sport cats on. But until then, I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy these. And, um, and I think it's going to really sound awesome. So I'm pretty excited to share with you what it sounds like. So while I had these on the bench, I went ahead and put anti-seize on all the bung locations. And then I also put in the pre-cat O2 sensors. And this is just so much easier on the bench. I, I highly recommend just doing it on the bench. And then I installed them in the car. Um, the thing is, it's, I just had a lot of a lot of trouble with the clamps, and I didn't, I didn't have any good footage of me putting the clamps on, so um, I skipped that part for the, the sake of this video and um, the sake of your patience. So they're both in. I recommend starting with the front clamp and then working your way to the rear clamp. Um, try to make them loose so you can like wiggle them a little bit and then clamp them down tightly. And then work on the EGT sensor and then the... Uh, misfire tubes up in the front and then same for this side um, the hardest part i had was getting the clamps in the front if your exhaust if there's a gap between the pipe and the exhaust you can loosen up the exhaust by undoing this bolt right here and this bolt right here with a 16 millimeter wrench and then underneath there's uh, a spring-loaded bolt uh, mine is very rusty on both sides 16 millimeter bolt right here so put your hand through here and then put a, uh, a 16 millimeter wrench on this this bolt right here while you loosen the uh, spring-loaded bolt underneath on both sides then you should be able to have the exhaust loose enough to where you can actually get good um, contact between the pipes and the uh, actual exhaust and then once we have the test pipes in we're pretty much on easy street when it comes to reassembling this car um, the main component being the air box and also with the subframe assembly, there's a wiring harness that's uh, actually zip tied to the subframe. And you notice there's actually little mounting points for zip ties. So you can take the old zip ties out that you cut, uh, put new zip ties on, and then wrap them around the wiring harness. So I actually don't have post cat O2 sensor spacers on the car yet um, on either side. And I've been driving this car for a couple days and I haven't had any codes whatsoever. So pretty interesting, and I, I thought that was an interesting thing. I did not expect that to happen. I'm going to be documenting uh, what post-cat O2 sensor spacers you should be using on your car, and there's also a couple other solutions that are out there, but I wanted to get that on a different video um, because there's a lot of misinformation out there regarding these, and um, I wanted to clear that up. So um, in the future, I'm, I'm going to do that, but right now I'm really just surprised that I haven't gotten any codes. It's really interesting. So extremely simple install overall. Once I got the uh, old catalytic converters out, it was super easy to put those test pipes in. 
I was getting pretty tired at the end of the day. And uh, so I apologize for any sort of lack of detail when it came to uh, the final installation. Um, those, those clamps were just extremely finicky. But if this video helped you, please consider giving it a like. That way I know that um, I'm providing good quality content and I'm giving you information that you need to know. So with that out of the way, let's start up my Super Legere and see exactly how it sounds.